Oof, 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 oof. We have to talk about this one. This one's a big one. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, Trump did had COVID. Did Trump have COVID or not? Who knows? We don't know. No one knows. No one has a clue. Um, I would kind of verge on the side that he probably did have it. I just don't assume. If we're, if we're reading between the lines, especially having read the James, I bought the James Comey book. Don't judge me, but you know, during the hysteria of Trump in his you know first couple of years, I kind of blapped up and was like, oh yeah, I'm going to jump on the book as well and read it and find out more about him. But essentially, the book told you nothing new, everything that you need to know about Trump. You just got to like listen to him speak and read his tweets, right? That's basically his personality. So reading between lines of what James Comey said, how he acts in public, Donald Trump himself, and obviously reading between lines about what Mary Trump said, you know, she read obviously a book, a tell-all book about the family, but you can't really take her side too seriously because she might have a vendetta, she might have an axe to grind, or she just might be a bit of a bitch in general, right? So if we read between the lines, I would say Donald Trump wouldn't go as far as trying to fake that he had COVID just because I think he's a guy that necessarily, he's a guy that kind of he's so worried about how he's he's so worried about perceiving himself as strong um as fearless as kind of like you know um headstrong fearless um you know macho whatever it is whatever you know thing that he has in his head that he wouldn't necessarily even go that far to think up this elaborate scheme so he can gain sympathy he doesn't want sympathy he doesn't really want that whatsoever. He knows you'll never get it. He just wants um, the control, the power. As long as he's got the power and the influence and the attention, more so kind of like a Kanye West, he's okay. He's not really worried about having the respect of people. So I don't think this is a way to gain sympathy or, you know, to get people to be on his side. No, this was just a thing that happened. But then in a moment, as a genius marketeer as he is, he was able to twist and turn it in order to kind of suit his narrative. And what better way to suit his narrative than to get COVID? And again, most people, even myself, thought, you know what, this could be his awakening. But no, it wasn't. He doubled down his personality, discharged himself from hospital. If you believe what you read on the internet, supposedly his doctor said he didn't need to stay that long. But every other account that we have of a world leader getting COVID, they've had to quarantine for the necessary 14 days. They've been administered, the, you know, the medicines that they need and they've continued their business. But he hasn't refused to stay in his in his in the hospital. He's He's, you know, they sort of kind of bent the truth a little bit about the time that he spent there when he got it that's not necessarily the important thing the important thing or the most interesting thing of it is that this guy is truly blockbuster truly truly blockbuster um tv and i don't necessarily know what most people will do especially the ones that hate him once he does get you know kicked out of office or he gets you know um or Biden ends up winning, which I don't necessarily think will happen, unfortunately. If you're American, I've, I do necessarily think, unfortunately, Trump will end up winning again. I just don't see people in America going through a pandemic deciding to change administration. It just doesn't make sense in the middle of a global pandemic. I don't necessarily think. I think most people will just be like, you know what, let's just keep him in place for now. Let things kind of, you know, blow over and then we'll, you know, um, reconvene again, you know, once his second term is over. But... You just can't take your eyes off him. And he then decided to put together this entire Hollywood production regarding his being discharged from the hospital, which is just epic to say the least, isn't it? Epic in all the wrong ways because it sends a wrong message to everybody else out there that got COVID. And if anything, it just lacks a bit of, um, what do you say? Not even sympathy. I don't know what it is. That It just lacks a bit of care it lacks a bit of regard for the public and what they're going through the fact that he's received world class of 24 hour attention for some of the best doctors and physicians available in the great state of america and then now he's suddenly trying to talk about it as if it's no big deal to everybody else which is insane but this is the video how it starts look at that gets in a helicopter lands at the White House. <laughs> With the mask on. Hand raised up. And again, like, who in his team put this together? Like, this is insane the way these guys think, isn't it? Especially considering there's a global pandemic going around. Like, they still have this... They're in this, but again, I guess there's so much at stake for them in some respects. You have to understand that even if you don't like Trump, right? He obviously, if you believe the stories that he'd never actually wanted to be president, 
it just stumbled in it right especially you know the fact that hillary was such a terrible candidate she didn't really inspire confidence with most people it seemed like even though you know she might have won the popular vote you know in, in general she's not very well liked it seems by some section of the american public so he kind of won by default and now that he's got the power, now that he's sat in that position, now that he's kind of shaken things up, right? And he's kind of put him, he's, he's, what's that Joe Rogan quote? Like he's given license to dickheads to be dickheads, right? That is basically the case in some respect. I think a lot of these politicians who are kind of playing nice and, you know, not playing nice, but like, you know, not being as outrightly, um, I wouldn't say narcissistic, but whatever that term is, outrightly, wherever they are now, Trump is giving them license to sort of flex their muscles. So they've also got a lot of riding on it because they want him to obviously stay in power because it makes, you know, it kind of uh, is a prerequisite because if, if he gets kicked out of office, they're obviously going to lose their jobs too. So there's a lot of riding on it. So I understand the, the kind of reasoning as to why they would be at his bedside, you know, concocting a marketing plan, a production, uh, you know, plan, putting together, you know, storyboard, and all how they document his return back to the White House. But this is insane propaganda material this is this and that makes me laugh too because you know americans have this fixation with russia and what putin's doing but this is worse than what putin would have done putin would have done like putin would have obviously done something similar but this is worse this is as bad or worse than what putin would have done this is insane like legitimately insane <laughs> like the big you know so in the grand scale of the white house him standing there on the balcony overlooking you know, saluting the helicopter as it lifts off, thanking them for their service with the flag waving in the background in DC. Like, maddening, man. Absolutely maddening. And then, of course, he then decides to explain um, his experience being at the, what was it, Walter Reed, whatever hospital that he was in, and essentially downplays <laughs> the threat of coronavirus. <laughs> Absolute nutcase. Walter Reed Medical Center. And it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders. And I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's- He's not calling the China virus anymore. It's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're gonna beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines. And again, like f forget him as a politician, just imagine in terms of getting over the virus and trying to get it under some sort of control, wouldn't you just think a better way to go about it would be like, hey, I've had the virus and I can honestly say um, that even though I've had, you know, a high level, high level, high levels of care, right? High touch levels of care, because I'm obviously a president. They obviously got to make sure they do everything in their power to make sure nothing untoward happens to me. We've set some protocols in place, some standard practices across the board that are going to ensure anyone that does get into hospital at the moment will have a high percentage of surviving, right? Or whatever it may be, right? So for our stat, that will be a, probably the best way to go about it. But you can also, also say, but in the meantime, if you're going to go to kind of places, wear a mask, but don't let this rule your life. That's okay, right? You just kind of, you just have to move the don't let it rule your life to the front, to the end. You just got to say, hey, I went through this stuff, wear your mask, um, you know, keep a, keep a, you know, two meters or whatever a distance from each other, blah, blah, blah. But then also don't let it rule your life. That's, a, that's perfectly fine advice. But to suggest that they shouldn't let it rule their lives at all. So what does that mean? Does that mean everyone could just go out and live their lives as normal and just let the virus, because it wash over, as he said in the past? This guy is mad, bruv. It's all developed recently. And you're gonna beat it. I went. So again, recent. So what? If I got COVID prior, I'm I'm fucked. But if I get it from October onwards, I'm okay. <laughs> I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left. Two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have. Ago. Two days. Ago, I could have left. Well, weird sentence, right? This bit I didn't get when I watched it the good. first time. So and yeah. two days. What you say? And you're gonna beat it. I went. I didn't feel so good. So you said I went. I didn't feel so good. Then. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. And now he said two days ago, he could have left. So what? The, that doesn't make any sense. Because obviously he's trying to say that I didn't I didn't feel so great. But then once I got the treatment and um, I spoke to the doctors and I rested a bit, I felt much better. I feel much better than I ever have done in the past. But you can't just, you can't say I didn't feel good. Then two days I felt great. That doesn't make any sense. Two days ago, I felt great. Like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago what don't let it die how does that even make any sense better than 20 years ago that doesn't make any sense what because you got you got um what uh steroids injections or something 
How can you feel better after 20 years because you went through COVID? That's like Brendan Schaub's levels of um, bro science, mate. Dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. We have the greatest country in the world. We're but it has taken over everyone's lives. Isn't it, what, 200,000 people dead or something in the United States? It's taken over people's lives. Now, again, does that mean that um, every leader should tell you to hunker down in place and not go out again and sort of like live like a hermit? No. But like I said, he could have easily said all of this and then said at the end, don't let it rule your lives, right? Start, hey, wear your mask, keep your distance, but then don't, 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 you know, let it rule your life. But this advice is just shocking. We're going back. We're going back to work. We're going to be out front. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. No, you didn't. You didn't have, like, you could have gone outside, but you could have just made sure you prevent yourself from touching and being in the room with random strangers and shit. And this is the interesting part of it, because he's acting very similar to all these YouTube influencers, isn't it? It's the same way that they act, right? Where they get tested every single day, even when they don't have symptoms, just to ensure that they can go out and live their lives. It's sort of akin to, like, going raw dog on everyone that you have sexual intercourse with and then getting tested every single time. Or every time you or every time before you have sexual intercourse raw but without protection, you make sure you get tested so you make sure you don't have anything and the other person does, but then you could just eliminate the risk by putting a condom on. I stood out front, I led. Nobody that's a leader <laughs> would not do what I did. That's a this that Joe Biden in it, like hiding <laughs> hiding in place. <laughs> and I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. <laughs> I love when he says that stuff. Like he always kind of when he, whenever he wants to say something that he doesn't want to be held accountable to or held to, he will say, "I don't know." Right? He he does that a lot. Like he did that stuff. Maybe I'm immune. I don't know. What can I say? Maybe the Trump blood is the best blood, the greatest blood. <laughs> no, but don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there. Be careful. We have the best medicines. Be again, better advice in the start. If you just would have said, don't let it rule your lives, be careful, be vigilant, put your mask on, but don't let it rule your lives. That's all he has to say. But he doesn't. He says all that stuff beforehand that makes it seem like he's a non, what is it? He's an anti-masker and just essentially gives everyone, this is, a, this is essentially going to put more batteries into the backs of all those people that have arguments in shopping centers and protests out of town halls about the mask mandate. This is just going to increase all that debate. It's not going to change. It's not going to stop anytime soon. So again, if you if you're uh, wanting to make a couple bucks, make sure you grab your smartphone, charge it, and head out to your nearest Target and record as many um, interactions as you can with mask wearers and non-mask wearers because it's going to keep heating up, heating, heating up. In the world, and it all happened very shortly, and they're all getting approved, and the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you very much. And what does that even mean? The vaccines are coming momentarily. Momentarily, the vaccines will be available. How can the vaccines be coming? I don't know. It doesn't matter about the grammar. Anyway, man, this guy's a he's a special case, isn't he? An interesting, special, special case in that regard. Um, what can you do if you're a if you're a citizen of the United States, you just have to throw your hands up in the air. But then I think anyone that was praying that he'd die, you know, you're a special next kind of breed of a person. But just even just from terms of optics level, oh no, just terms of common sense level, if Boris Johnson didn't die, and he's a pretty schlubby looking dude for the in the UK, he's a prime minister here for us in the UK, it was unlikely that Donald Trump was going to die. They won't let that happen. So um, I guess it's good that he's back. Um, it's going to probably... Um, annoy most people but well, i guess most people are out there hoping that he will pass away but this guy's resilient man he's teflon that's why they call him the teflon don they don't call him teflon don for no reason man he's legitimately made out of teflon so yeah